Hey guys, and welcome back to Battlefront Updates. Patch 1.1 was just released on all platforms. In this video, I wanted to go over the patch notes, as well as go over some hidden changes that for some reason are not in the patch notes, but that I think a lot of you still want to know about. So the patch brought in a couple of nice surprises, as well as changes that we have all been waiting for. But it is also missing some stuff that people were hoping for, such as a buff for some lightsaber heroes, nerf to Palpatine, change to how rolling works against lightsabers. But CJ clarified out on Twitter that the work on this patch was actually concluded weeks ago. So that's why some of the things that they have brought up on Twitter, like the things I mentioned earlier, are not in this patch. But as you know, they have said that the patches are going to come out every two weeks. So hopefully the next patch, which will hopefully be here in two weeks, might change some of the stuff that they have brought up recently. Because unfortunately, I think it takes a few weeks for the patches to be verified by Sony, Microsoft and so on. Which is why the patches we get are always a couple of weeks old, unless it's a server side patch. But let's jump straight into it. The first surprise is that we are getting a new blast map on Crate. I haven't managed to get any gameplay on this map yet, and I haven't seen anyone else get it either. So it seems to be pretty rare as of right now, but once I get some great blast gameplay, I will make sure to upload that to the channel as well. And another surprise is that we now got Aiden vs TIE Fighter added as a new hero in Starfighter Assault. And it has these four abilities, the Afterburner, Laser Barrage, Jewel, Proton Torpedoes, as well as Inferno Leader that reveals all enemies around her to herself as well as her teammates and you will also deal extra damage to all marked targets and then there's a big list of all her star cards that i won't be going through right here but i will as always link to the patch notes in the description below but if we move on to the actual patch changes we first off have finn whose base damage on the el-16 has been reduced from 65 to 45 which i don't quite understand i do agree that his dead eye was a bit too powerful but i'm not sure if i agree that his normal blaster was too powerful but then they reduced the time before the heat cooldown kicks in from 3.5 to 1.5 seconds and i'm not really sure what that means if that means that it will just overheat quicker or if it's something else because heat cooldown kicks in seems to be something else. And then we got reduced damage of each Deadeye shot from 40 to 30, which I fully agree on. Because if you have a Finn versus someone who can't block, you can just obliterate them in a few seconds. And then we have Phasma with a very well needed buff to her blaster that will now not generate as much heat as before. And I can also note that they have changed the sound effect of her blaster, which I now think sounds a lot better. But I'm not sure why they haven't added that in the patch notes. Her staff still badly needs a buff hopefully that will come in the next patch and then we have lando with a fixed bug for maximized efficiency that was not properly granting cooldown reduction and i think i actually have this card epicked out so i'm very glad that they have fixed that and now we have boba fett who has gotten his rockets reduced from 90 to 78 in the rocket barrage as well as some radius reduction for each rocket and i've seen some people complain about this which i don't quite understand because just before the patch, you were still able to one-shot an enemy hero with his rocket barrage, which to me is not really balanced gameplay. I agree that his blaster should be slightly buffed, but the fact that one ability can take you from full health to zero health without even having epic cards does warrant a buff in my opinion so i think this was a good change and then we of course have the wookie warrior with a bunch of changes both to the projectile damage fall of distance heat per shot and so on and i've actually tried the wookie warrior a little bit and it's still viable i got five kills the first life i played with it but you can really feel that you deal a lot less damage especially on medium to long range so i think they might have done a good job nerfing it to make sure that it's not useless but not overpowered but i haven't tried it against heroes yet which was one of the big issues and hopefully that has been changed as well and for the specialists they have reduced the size of the scope glint which i think is good i mean at the beginning of naboo it was crazy big and they've added a scope glint to the following long range weapons el16 hf E, A280, Pulse Rifle, and Captain Phasma's F11D. As well as reduced heat per shot for the following long range weapons. Valken, E5S, DLT28, DLT19X, A180, and DLT19D. So I think this makes more of the sniper rifles viable, because as of right now, I don't see any reason to not use the NT242. And they also slightly buffed the infiltration to be able to fire a little bit quicker, which I think is good because as of right now, it is not very used. And then for the heavy, we have reduced AOE of supercharged and explosive sentry, as well as increased heat 
for the supercharged sentry and it sounds like a good change but it's gonna be impossible to see if this will counter all the issues with the sentry right now but i think if the aoe is decreased it should also mean that if you block with a lightsaber it hopefully won't do as much damage i can't say for sure obviously but at least in theory it sounds like that problem should have been reduced and for the officer we have reduced explosion damage when turret is destroyed by blaster fire from 150 to 25 which wasn't really something I had an issue with before, so I can't really speak about that change. And then we have the weapon changes to the CR2, start damage from 17 to 16, and damage from 9 to 8, as well as reduced f damage falloff. And this seems like a good change, not a massive nerf that will make it useless, but just a slight nerf to not make it as good. And the barrage has had a quite big change, because the blast radius has been very much reduced, whereas the damage has been increased from 55 to 100. So I might actually give the barrage a go now and see if it's viable, because if it does 100 damage per hit, that means you should be able to kill pretty much anyone with three of those hits. And the Blurg has had quite a lot of nerfs to the explosive shot, as well as reduced accuracy if you have the burst mod equipped and a quicker fall off, which I think is good considering it was very effective on long range and it wasn't that hard to beat a specialist, which might now be the case. And for the trip mine, we have a quite interesting change where you can now have two mines deployed at the same time. And I think that's a fair change considering that the trip mine is not a very well used weapon. And now you can actually lock down some zones pretty well if you can actually place out two of them. And they have also reduced the time until a mine disappears after death from 5 to 15 seconds. So you might get a lot more post death kills now. And lastly we have a couple of general things such as fixed a bug where both the officer's recharge command and Finn's big deal abilities were not affecting heroes or special units properly. Fix an issue with each sector on the minimap would not light up properly the first time an enemy fired. Reduced fade in time for minimap sector from 0.3 to 0.1. Stability improvements as well as misc bug fixing. And I'm sure we will notice the more we play which bugs has been fixed and which ones hasn't. And now over to a couple of the changes that wasn't on the patch note list. First off we got CJ, one of the designers on the game, saying out on Twitter that the Death Trooper and B2 Super Battle Droid has had a change where the overload greatly reduces recoil for better weapon handling while this ability is active, making them slightly better, which I think is good to hear. And then we also got a very nice quality of life change where the milestones will now pop up in the game, so you actually know when they are when they are finished. And we also got a nighttime version for Tatooine, which for some reason aren't in the patch notes. I haven't verified if this is available on all versions of Tatooine, such as Galactic Assault and the Blast, but I recorded this in arcade, so it definitely, so it should be available in multiplayer as well. And some people have reported that unlocking the weapon mods now requires less kills. And you can also see this little icon above the Wookiee Warrior's abilities, which according to CJ means that you have faster cooldown on the abilities after a officer has buffed you. So I'm assuming that might show up on all different classes and not just the Wookiee Warrior. But those are all the changes for now. I'm sure we will notice a lot more hidden changes the next couple of hours and days. And if we do, I will of course update you on that. As well as if any developers respond with anything interesting out on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching and as always, may the force be with you.